Alright, so I'm going to open up and try to disassemble this Dell Inspiron model 5570. So first what you want to do is just undo all the screws. So there's one, oh these, you'll use a PH1 um, or J1. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, so the three screws on the back, they actually stay in place because there's little washers that hold them. So you don't have to completely remove them. Um, but just undo them until they stop um, coming up. All right, after you do that, then you can pull the CD drive out. Just use your fingernail or pry tool and kind of pull on here. Um, if it's difficult to uh, do that, what you can do is get like a needle or a small bent paper clip. Or, and then you can use, there's this little release hole here. And then you can use that and it'll pop out the CD tray. Once you do that, you can grab it by the side and then you can pull it out just like that. Okay. So once you do that, there's two more screws under here. Um, these are different. They're a lot uh, shorter and flatter. Um, so keep them all in order. All right. After you remove all the screws, what you want to do is open it up. And then you'll see there's the little gap here between the um, palm rest and the bottom panel. So what you do is you just get your fingernails or pry tools in there. And then you just pull it up like this. All right. So I pull with my fingernails while I push with my thumbs. All right. So just like this, and you can pop the clips out and then just go all the way around. I keep going around the sides. All right, just like this. All right, go around the other side. Let's see, all right, pop like that. Hopefully you can see, there you go. Keep going. So on the back side, it's a little bit more difficult, but you basically pull up the little lip here while you're kind of holding the rest up. Okay, there we go, just like that. And it's caught somewhere, but there we go. All right, so now we got the whole panel off. So you can see, just like this. All right, set that aside. All right, so now you can see inside, there's the battery connector here. So the battery connector can pop out of the battery and the board. Um, to remove the battery, what you want to do is undo the screws. Um, looks like there's four screws holding the battery in place. All right, so remove those four screws. And before I forget to mention, um, there is an M.2 SSD slot here. I don't know if that's for SATA uh, M.2s or PCIe NVMe SSDs. Um, but yeah, there's a slot there. So if you wanted to find out, usually SATA will be compatible with even the PCIe NVMe slots. Um, so if you aren't sure, you can get that. Um, though the PCIe NVMe ones are faster. Um, so I don't know, you can order one on Amazon. If it doesn't work, just return it. But um, after you remove the four screws for the battery, you can lift the battery up a little bit. And then I like to use my fingernails where the white connector is. It has little wings and you kind of just wiggle it and it'll pop out just like that. Okay, so there you go. So this battery model is um, WDX0R, so if you need to replace that, okay. All right, so now you can see the hard drive connector here. So if you want to remove the hard drive, you just flip this little lever up, or the latch, and then you can pull these connectors out. I'm going to leave it in here because the main complaint was the fan. So I can definitely tell the fan is bad on this model. Um, it looks like I can take out the fan without... Um, taking the whole uh, motherboard or the CPU uh, cooler out. So we're gonna do that. All right, oh, the fan screws are quite a bit long. There's three screws holding the fan in, it looks like. Hopefully it will come out without me having to take the whole motherboard apart or take the whole motherboard out. So after you remove those three, yep, okay. So we will have to remove the LCD connector um, after you remove the battery to be safe, if you're going to undo the latch for the LCD connector, you want to hold the power button for about 15 seconds just to drain any power. Um, this will prevent you from shorting anything out. Okay. So when you open the screen or the palm rest, be very careful because now that the screws aren't holding the hinges down, um, it's a little bit weaker. All right. So as you can see here, now there's missing, I don't know if you can see it but there's two screws missing on the hinges, okay? So to be um, careful, I would push on the hinges instead of just slamming the thing down, all right? If you want, you can also make sure that the hinge screws are still tight because sometimes they come loose and then that causes the hinges to break, all right? 
to be extra safe, you can use like Loctite or not Loctite, Threadlocker. Um, this is by Loctite, but it's Threadlocker. So you can add that, the red one, to the threads. Um, I'll do that afterwards because that's going to be some added extra time. Um, but yeah, so the hard drive connector looks like it just comes out pretty easily. There are four screws holding the hard drive in place. So if you want to take the hard drive out, remove those four screws, you can lift the whole hard drive up um, after you also disconnect this. Or you can just remove this connector first, um, though it's kind of difficult to get removed. So this, if you try and pull on the sides, you can actually pop off this black piece and damage it. So what I do is I use my fingernail as a pry tool. So I use the back of my nail against the hard drive, and then I use my fingernail to kind of pry the upper lip. And then you can kind of pry it up like this. And as you can see, it comes out. Um, make sure the computer's off when you do this. But then you can either use, like, if you have a thin plastic or metal pry tool, I'll put the pry tool in, and then I'll use that to twist it like this to pop that connector out, okay? So if you want to remove the connector, that's how you can do it, because this one is very difficult to grab it. All right, then you got the CMOS battery here, which connects to, this to the motherboard with this cable. Um, there's a USB port on it and the SD card reader as well. So if for some reason these stop working, you can replace this board. Uh, separately from the rest of the computer. Then you got the speakers. It connects um, to the other speaker here. And then you have the connector over here. If you want to remove the connector for the speaker, just grab the wings and then just keep wiggling it. Don't pull too hard. Just keep wiggling and it'll come out just like that. All right. Then you got the keyboard connector here. You got the keyboard backlight connector here. You got the trackpad connector. And then you got this connector here, which I'm not sure where that's going to because, oh, I think that's for the, no, this is for the optical disk drive. So if for some reason this optical disk drive stops working, it could either be the CD drive or it could be this cable or this board. Um, I'm not sure what this small one is for because it looks like, okay, there are two connectors here. So one is for the power button, which is up here. And then the other one, I don't know what this little board is for. Let me see if I can tell if I open this. Okay, I is that an LED? No, I don't, I don't know. That might be a fingerprint. I think the power button is also a fingerprint sensor on this model. So that might be the controller for the fingerprint sensor. Um, then you got the LCD connector here. The, I forgot to mention the optical disc drive to remove these connectors. You actually pull this little white plastic piece up on the sides. It pops up and then you can actually pop the connector out like this, okay? Um, and then the LCD connector here, you just flip this little latch up all right, just like that, and then you can pull it out just like the keyboard and the, um, yeah. Okay, so they did label this. This cable actually is the fingerprint sensor, and then I think this cable is for the power button. Um, then you got the CPU and GPU, of course. Um, the GPU is here, the CPU is here, um, but they're soldered to the motherboard, um, so you can't upgrade it or change it. Then you got the RAM. The RAM is, this has 16 gigs, PC4, 2400T. So if you wanted to add another 16 gig stick, um, I suggest you open it and then get the, a matching stick. So it's like the same exact model and everything. Then you got the wireless card, just like every other model, but this one has a little plastic thing on top. So remove the screw. You can pop off this little plastic cover and then pull up from the tail of the antennas and it'll pop off. Um, and then since the screw will already be out, the wireless card, you can kind of lift up slightly like the RAM and then wiggle it out. Then you also got the DC jack connector here. Um, and to replace the DC jack, you do have to remove this hinge, which after you undo all the screws, you can lift the hinge up and then you can take the DC jack out. Um, I'm going to leave it there because the only thing that they have problems with is the fan. So now that I got all these out, I will remove the LCD connector here and then guide this cabling out and then hopefully the fan will come up. Yep. All right. And then you got the wings of the fan connector here. So just grab it and then wiggle it and pull it out. All right, just like this. Just keep wiggling it. Don't use too much force and it should pop out. Okay, so they actually label it with a little red dot. So this side is supposed to be up. The other side has the little, you can see the pin connectors there. So make sure you don't plug it in upside down. Uh, but it looks like that's pretty much all there is to this model. This fan, um, it, I have another video that shows how to clean fans, but you have to cut these little plastic things off to remove this metal cover, it looks like. So for this fan, 
Um, there's also a little clip here so for this fan but yeah to fix it you'll need to use like a razor blade cut these little plastic bits off and then you can pull this cover off and hopefully after that you can pull the propellers out and add grease to it because this fan as you can see it doesn't spin freely um, by comparison here's how a normal fan would spin I turn it and it keeps going so this fan yeah it's it's bad okay um, so it looks like that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not gonna take the whole board out. There might be something under there, but yeah, I'm not gonna take that out. But, um, yeah, so, oh, and the keyboard, it's actually melted in place with these plastic bits. So if you do need to change the keyboard, it'll be a lot easier to replace the whole palm rest assembly. Um, putting back these little melted plastic things, you need like a special tool or maybe a 3D printer pen and you can do it, but it's a pain. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want a two and a half inch, uh, SATA SSD, you can put that as well. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to this computer. So if you need to put it back together, just watch the video in reverse. Um, and hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like, and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. Bye.